go. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of VCTV. And yes, it is still May 4th. May the 4th be with you. It is Star Wars Day. We are excited here at VCTV. However, we do have one co-host who did not know it was Star Wars Day, so we will be calling them out for the majority of today's show and going to have a little fun with it. So get your Star Wars references ready, audience. Make sure you drop them in the comments box. I'll use as many of them as I can throughout today's episode as well. But we're also here to talk about early stage venture capital and seed investing. What's happening in this space from all of us as investors in and throughout early stage? What in, in terms of industry are we seeing the most activity? What new deals are out there and what do you need to be knowing on both sides of the table? If you're an investor, what should you be paying attention to? What categories? What, in, what insights do you need if you're looking at making investments in the US, Asia, Latin America, Europe, well, that's what we're going to talk about. But entrepreneurs, what do you need to know if you're raising your first, second, third round of funding all the way up to that early series as well? Well, we're going to be talking about that because I have a group of co-hosts that have joined me from around the world to break all of this down. A big shout out to the Little Token team and to Maria for making today's episode possible as well. Make sure to check us out on LaToken.com to hear from today's speakers all speakers of the VCTV galaxy as well. And again, I look forward to your Star Wars comments in the comments box and saying hello to all of us. With that being said, first and foremost, the man who did not know it was Star Wars Day today and did not know the Force or the Fourth was with him. We're going to kick it off with Elfish. Welcome back to the show, my friend. Hey. A little intro and background for everybody. Hey, I'm I'm Alpesh Doshi, and I am a Star Wars fan. I love all Star Wars films. I've seen them multiple times. So may the fourth be with all of you who like Star Wars. Um, I even like The Mandalorian, and I've watched that more than once. So my background is in tech. I'm a tech entrepreneur um, and investor. Uh, I've built building tech businesses over the last 20 years. I love data and AI. I love early stage. Um, I, I really like early stage and, and talk to early stage founders all the time. Um, to find the uh, find and help them help them launch their businesses. So there we go. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Jason, all the way in the Midwest. Happy Star Wars Day as well to you. A little intro, a little background. I want to first say I did not know it was Star Wars Day either. So uh, you're not alone. Uh, but uh, Elfish, I apologize. I'm going to interrupt real quick. I apologize. I only teased Elfish. I'm now teasing both of you. So comments, <laughs> keep them coming. We've got two for two. Garrett already knows because we talked about it previously. Nicole knows. I know that a few of our other guests are going to show up due as well. So Jason and Elfish, you're in the penalty box. Viewers, <laughs> let's have some fun. Jason, a little intro and background for everybody. Great. Well, thank you for having me here. My name is Jason Jacobs, and I've been very active in the entrepreneurial and investment community for about 20 years in the Midwest of the U.S. and uh, recently launched Propellant Ventures, which is about bold investing, empowering the future with the companies that we uh, engage with. We are a seed stage fund focused on investing in B2B companies throughout the Midwest. Industries we like are healthcare, future work, fintech, edtech, and supply chain. For many of the opportunities will come in at the uh, earliest stage, we'll be the first professional investor. We could lead the round, uh, but we're excited about what we're seeing out there and we'll get into that a little bit more. The other thing I'll mention is I do run the Founder Institute chapter in Chicago. I've been doing that for about 10 years and that's a pre-seed technology accelerator located in over 200 cities around the world. So glad to be here, Kyle, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming as well. And it's not only in multiple cities around the world, but also in the metaverse as well. You guys do a ton on the VR side as well. So those who have not checked out Jason's uh, LinkedIn, definitely follow that as you can see uh, as he takes snippets from uh, those uh, meetings as well. So definitely recommend tuning into that. Garrett, welcome back to the show. Someone who does know it's Star Wars Day, <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, coming back. Uh, Garrett, a little intro, a little background for everybody. Yeah, I'm Garrett Van Wagner. Uh, um, you know, I, I've been doing um, venture investments for 25 years and uh, investments in small cap technology for 30 plus years. Uh, but now I'm really focused on clean tech uh, investors in, in the early stage. Um, our family has been clean tech for 120 years. We we had a, a electric runabout called VW Electric Runabout. 
and we uh, we sold about uh, apparently the family sold about oh, 15 or 20 of them from 1896 or 7 to 1903 we didn't make it to, to the public market because i don't even know what the public market was like back then because i wasn't around but today we really focus on smart transportation that's usually trucks that are class three through eight uh, planes called EV e volatiles trains and marine uh, vehicles um we do we start up very early um we're really focused on the early side so we're focused on either common stock or preferred round a's no alphabet soup for us we invest early in companies that have established products we're laser focused on our target verticals because we, we're really focused in that area and we, we we try to you know really focused on that area because there's a lot of activity going on and we just know we can only do so much in a day with me and my staff so we're raising fund four right now fund one through three in the venture business was did very well and we're actually going to probably start a mutual fund later this year uh, at the end of the summer because valuations in the clean tech area have been very high um all this year and they're coming down very quickly and uh, i think they're going to get to the point you know later on where it really makes sense to start investing so we're doing our home uh, homework on all the companies they're either doing SPACs or have come public so we know the, the what's going on in the area um so we'll you know maybe get involved in, uh, in when they're public <laughs> for the first right. time in a long time <laughs> thank you gary keith welcome back to the show as well a little intro and background for everybody hey sorry to join late thanks for your understanding uh, yeah, I've been in venture for uh, over 20 years, uh, originally on the uh, corporate side of things with Mitsubishi Corporation and then as president of BASF Venture Capital America, a decade with Pangea Ventures, raising and running funds three and four. And in 2020, I formed a new group called Upper Stage Capital. Uh, we are investing in that no man's land uh, to, before typical private equity comes into play, but outside of venture, investing into uh, profitable companies in with five to $25 million in revenue. Uh, a, a very underserved space with hundreds and hundreds of really uh, interesting uh, companies. Um, I'm also, uh, I've been an early stage investor, uh, and I still do that uh, from an angel uh, perspective. Uh, and I am uh, chairman of the Foresight Clean Tech Accelerator Group, which is Canada's largest clean tech accelerator. Um, largely on the early uh, on the early side of things, but we also have a growth program for commercial companies. Wonderful, and also runs an outstanding clubhouse uh, room as well for the entire entire uh, Canada Venture Capital Group or Canadian Venture Capital Group as well. Just as a side note, last but not least, one of my favorites because she also <laughs> knew it was Star Wars Day. Nicole, welcome back to the show. A little introduction and background for everybody. Thank you, Nicole DeMeo here. Super happy to be back on VC TV. And yes, I knew it was May the 4th and may the 4th be with you all. Uh, Laura Dern is my doppelganger. So I have been mistaken for Admiral Holdo a few times. Can you see it? <laughs> um, but um, I am in a typical situation among many men. <laughs> and so I have built a venture capital fund for women. It's called How Women Invest and we are investing in early stage um, companies, kind of in that awkward teenager stage where you're between early, you know, seed and A, and need that growth capital, need to just nail it and continue on the growth path. Um, we're investing in companies that are technology forward, that have revenue streams, so um, really great, um, group uh, that I've I've built this fund with. We have a really active LP base and active fund managers, and they all throw in, and we create SWAT teams and do a lot of value add for the women that we invest in. So we're investing in female founded and female led companies. And because I wear a number of different hats, um, I actually also have a consulting firm that's like a CMO on demand. Um, so I'm consulting on marketing across technology, cannabis and women in leadership. Um, and I'm a venture partner in two other funds that are also investing in seed stage companies, uh, Seed Milestone Fund and Andra Capital. So yeah, 
looking forward to the conversation. Wonderful. Nicole, since you had the best introduction uh, with multiple Star Wars references, we're going to kick it off with you today. And more importantly, uh, to today's topic as well, you talked about the area which your fund focuses on uh, mm -hmm. in that kind of gap area between that seed and that early series, which is a problem for some companies. And we'd love to hear kind of what you're seeing happening um, in that space right now as seed rounds are pushing a little higher uh, in some regions than others. And those series are also pushing up as well in terms of size. Talk to us about what you're seeing in the space if you can, and maybe some industries that are seeing a little bit more activity in that gap area as well. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that is kind of our sweet spot. It's, you know, um, typically, and especially with women as founders, um, a lot of times it's not a challenge to get that, you know, kind of seed stage, friends and family, a strategic investor or two um, to come to the table. But when it comes to raising um, more of an institutional round, that's when it tends to get a little bit more challenging for women. Um, and so you're seeing uh, a proliferation of funds that are focused in this area, thankfully, um, that are growing. And so I'm really uh, glad that's happening. Um, more women are coming into venture. And, you know, the numbers show that, you know, the more that there are female LPs and female fund managers, they invest in more women and women tend to hire more women. So they're six times more likely to have more women. So I just actually wrote an article on this, this compound effect and how it's important for women to invest and get in, involved in that in that channel. Um, but there's no lack of deal flow. And, you know, there are just a, a ton of, of female founders that are coming to us. And what we're trying to do is just add value with every exchange, because um, maybe they won't fit, these companies won't fit with our investment thesis, but we are handing them to others who where it may fit better. Um, and yes, those A rounds, the numbers have gone up. Um, they're all rather significant. And um, that's, again, when you get into the institutional rounds, and a lot of times there's a little less representation when we're talking about investing in women. Um, another area, you know, that that is really happening in, in the early, you know, in the seed and A stage with these female founders is there's a lot of ESG, environmental and social good, um, baked into the business models. And that's something that we really love. So people are addressing what's happening culturally. So with the financial crisis, with Black Lives Matter, you know, um, and the pandemic and, and health tech and whatnot. So we're seeing a lot of companies in those in those. Um, those stages and addressing real needs, cultural needs in the market. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Nicole. Uh, Jason, I want to come to you next uh, on this as well. I mean, focused on the Midwest, uh, you know, how are you seeing the early stage and seed capital uh, scene really start to expand in this new era where you know we've got more investors like all six of us here who are fundraising and talking to companies on zoom and other mediums as well uh what are you seeing happening in that space in general and then I, we'll get industry specific but talk to us about the midwest first yeah i want to throw some numbers out there um you know as i think we all know those that read pitch book it's been a you know q1 is 125 billion in venture capital invested globally Illinois has had uh, an incredible Q1 as well. We have had $2 billion invested in Q1. That's an increase of about $475 million or, uh, from 2020 Q1 versus about $500 million Q1 2019. In fact, Q1 of this year in Illinois is almost tops the entire uh, 2019 number. So the growth is incredible here in the Midwest and Illinois and Chicago. Chicago leads the Midwest in terms of investing, but the fact is all of the Midwest is really growing. And so we're just seeing incredible amounts of capital that is being invested. We have a lot of new funds that have launched lately and many of them are focused on uh, investing in, you know, underrepresented founders. Uh, Nicole mentioned a little bit of that as well. We have a couple of funds that are focused on, we'll call it the friends and family round of investments uh, for these real early stage underrepresented founders. So we have 
bigger funds that have been launched uh, to tackle underrepresented founders and smaller funds as well. So you know, Chicago is, I believe, one of the cities leading the way in terms of those types of investment vehicles. We have a ton of those that have been launched recently. And they're looking across sectors, uh, but the fact is we have a lot of great efforts here to really boost up the local ecosystem on uh, across all fronts. And so, um, you know, so we have a lot of, again, it's very great, a great time to be starting a business and raising capital in the Midwest. It's a great time to be raising capital and start a business anywhere. Exactly. Uh, I'll add as well. I mean, let's, let's include everybody in that uh, because there are so many, uh, great opportunities out there and gaps to be filled with new businesses and also great companies being created and founded every day. So investors, there's no uh, no reason not to shy away from this. There's a ton here. Elpish, I want to come to you next on this. I mean, you have been investing as an angel in, in many different areas. We talk about data. We talk about AI. We talk about blockchain and fintech together. What are you seeing happening uh, throughout early stage and in, in seed investing that's getting you excited now more than ever here in, in this year uh, alone. Oh, I think we got a little bit of a technical difficulty there. The thing that I, I, I look at is is the, the transformation of industries. Um, and every industry is going to be transformed to digital, obviously. But, you know, really looking at how um, in terms of categories of software, how data and AI play into that. Um, and there are lots and lots of early stage companies knowing that the, the whole software market is one, gonna go into the cloud, two, gonna be data driven. Um, and those are, and those and those those the those applicate, you know, those uh, systems are gonna replace existing infrastructure, existing legacy applications that exist, even to the extent that replacing early cloud companies. So the early cloud companies aren't weren't really designed and architected for the cloud in the cloud they were they were put into a data center and then they say they're cloud based so if you look across the look across the market i think for me that's an exciting space if, if companies are if there are companies out there building next generation of applications in any any category which are cloud native built from the ground up with data at the center looking at data as the as the key part those are the ones i think are are big big multi-billion dollar unicorn unicorns coming up. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree. I mean, the next wave of applications, and for me, in my view, that's the centralized applications or distributed applications, but everyone has their definition of that. And I, I think, you know, to, to Elpish's point, I mean, there, if you are building this next wave of applications, if you're looking at web in general, there is so much power and opportunity out there just to go and start building as well. I mean, the, Elpish, to your point, I, I couldn't be more excited. There, to, and even to Jason Nichols' point, this has never been a more exciting time in my my history of technology than now to build and invest straight straight up looking at the multiple cycles in the past Keith's giving me the thumbs up so either I'm right or I'm completely wrong but nonetheless this is the time it is so exciting to be building something there's so many different technologies opportunities industries regions everything looking to be disrupted building into this next wave of economies Right, we've got digital, we've got virtual, we've got the physical, we've got changing of industries, as you mentioned. It is a good and an exciting time to be building, even more so to be investing. Uh, we're seeing new funds left and right. Uh, Multicoin Capital just announced a hundred million dollar fund focused on DeFi, NFTs, and decentralized applications, or the next wave of applications. Uh, to your point as well. Uh, so guys, get excited. Um, I think on Friday last week we had three new funds, 10, 20, and $100 million each all announced uh, just within a matter of a few minutes from each other. So that being said, tons of opportunity. Keith, what's getting you excited in this area? <laughs> oh, I, I never get excited. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I was telling you earlier today, uh, we made uh, an early stage investment in DeFi Ventures, uh, which uh, is a, uh, yeah, a DeFi play. And that's already going public. Uh, that was that was announced a couple of weeks ago. Um, the IRR on that one is uh, the the highest I've ever seen in my career. Uh, it moved very quickly, and and that's a space that's extremely exciting, where there is real utility, um, where there is real value for the customers, and it's not just speculation. 
although speculation is definitely driving things. Um, but at the, at the heart of that, there's real value. And that, that's what really excites me, is not to just speculate, but to get involved with companies where um, I'm, I understand what they're doing, uh, I, can, I can see the need, and I can see how I can engage my experience and my network to accelerate those companies through to a greater success. And uh, especially in early stage investing, I think that's where we, we should all be focusing. There is, there's a, there are very few uh, success cases where the only passive investors were involved in an early stage. These companies do not have the resources, despite all the money being thrown at them uh, recently, these companies do not have the resources to do everything that they need to do in the short period of time that they need to do it. And investors need to step up, engage their experience, engage their networks, help with the hiring and the firing, <laughs> help help with the, the partnering if there's manufacturing needed, uh, deal with that, regulatory experience. Uh, there's, there's a ton of things here where the startup can't be expected to have people on board that know all those things. But you can engage with the right investors, put together a great syndicate, a great board, a great advisory board, and uh, bring in, in enormous resources to bear and give those companies uh, a real uh, uh, unfair advantage against their competitors. And that's a, that's a great point. I mean, seeing shaking heads across the board, I mean, that's, that's a great point that I think sometimes gets forgotten as you're building a, your company, right? Even at the early stages, usually some of that comes in more at the later stage uh, as you start to cycle through uh, early employees or team members and, and founders, et cetera, uh, as well. But, uh, you know, throwing a, another piece into that as well is doing your research. As, a, as an entrepreneur, doing your research of who those people are and what those resources are that you may need, and I, being able to identify them, that's a real big skill, but also something every founder should be looking at uh, as they build their companies uh, at the earliest stages all the way through as well. Uh, and being able to, you know, to the question I asked Jason, I mean, everyone's all over the place right now. Uh, this is a great opportunity to actually pick up uh, some of those added resources that you might not otherwise be able uh, to access as well um, because people are a little bit more flexible and remote right now. Take advantage of the situation uh, as well. And um, with that being said, Garrett, I'm coming to you. I got a fun question for everybody. I'm going to start it off with you. Uh, three industries. And for you in particular, it can't be clean tech because we already talked about clean tech today. Three industries, one, two, three, that you are very excited about uh, at the early stage that people need to be paying attention to right now over the next year. Three industries, not clean tech. Garrett first. Well, I'll have a very simple answer. All I'm focused on is clean tech because what I've learned um, in my career or whether it was or, or, or my life is if you can do something well, stick to it. And, and you can have you can read articles or you can talk to people about other things that they're doing, but I just stick to clean tech um, because that's what I've been focused on for over 10 years now. Um, you know, I used, I did way back in the 90, late 90s, I did internet internet 1.0 and was very successful at that and you know and then social media companies came along and i completely missed it because i didn't focus on it i talked to people about it and I, I just decided you know what you don't know enough about it so don't put your capital or your limited partners money in because you don't really you're not focused on you don't really know is facebook going to really be successful or not I, I don't know so i just stick to clean tech so you could I'll, I'll, I'll leave right there and you can ask other people about what industries they're involved in because I just focus on clean tech. And as far as, you know, employees on my, in, in my firm, when I had uh, like 10 employees, I had five women, um, you know, um, some were from uh, Africa, some from South America, some were from Asia. So we're spread out all over the world. And we had a lot of female employees because they were very qualified and they were very good employees. So I don't really focus on, well, if he's from there or she, she's from there. I just focused on the quality people. And it just so happened that the world has lots of quality people in every field. So mm -hmm. that's where, where I've been. So I just stick to the, the clean tech area. As far as the executives, they're building the business. You have to have a business plan. 
But I think the, what you said, Kyle, and uh, what other people said, you really have to use, you know, uh, not only social media to develop what you're doing, you have to use outside resources because you can't build it all yourself. you got to find mm -hmm. people that are interested in your area that can help you, whether it's hiring and filing, firing or develop different markets. You need to use those resources. It's not just going to be all yourself. You need, you know, other people. We've uh, When I've Built, when I started my own firm way back in 1996, I immediately mm -hmm. hired five people, five people, and I just you know I, I didn't make any money for a year, but they, they you know probably they didn't either. But I was paying them good salaries, and I just wanted to build the firm. And you can't do it by yourself; it's impossible. No, you're absolutely right. It's it's not a solo game; it is a team game by all means. And with that being said, Elpish, I want to come to you next. Three industries, one, two, three, that you are incredibly excited about, and why from the early stage side. Well, fintech and and with fintech and insurtech, I would definitely you know put that in. So I'd include insurtech and fintech. One of the sort of trends around fintech is embedded finance. And embedded insurance um, I think we're in the early phases of that and that's going to be absolutely huge um, there's still a long way to go um, in terms of categories in financial services that, that are need need changing um, and so you know th that is still still under there's still not enough companies there um, and the incumbents the large banks the largest asset managers wealth managers insurance companies are really just not innovating fast enough so that's a big one um, if we're talking about blockchain and DeFi, you know, I think given I've been in it for six years and I've seen the the ups and downs, I think we're on a new wave of growth around that. Whether we're on mass adoption, I'm not. I don't know. But you know, with with um, with DeFi um, potentially going to move out what I call the bubble, you know, the bubble's going to pop and then that'll expand out. So at the moment, most of DeFi is in wind that in that bubble of companies. When it becomes when it when it gets to a point where it's mainstream, this that be huge. So I think the early the companies which are now now worth investing in, um, they're you know they're, they're coming up now, and there's a lot of those companies out there who are going to win. Who knows, right? I'm never going to tell you which ones I think are going to um, going to be huge because it's still too early to say. Um, and my favorite sector. Um, as I've as I've said, I won't say it's a it's a, a vertical sector, but it, it's AI, AI and data is still um, early days as well. There's lots of so the, the challenge for me. There's lots of AI companies, but my challenge with it is they're building siloed solutions to different use cases. You know, I've got an AI model for computer vision for X. You know, th those kind of companies I don't think are going to survive longer term. But AI will transform everything, and AI will be embedded to every single piece of software that that will exist in every part of every business. And we we've seen the sort of first wave of AI companies in the last say five years, six years. Um, but I think that there's still a huge change going to happen around the application of data in businesses, and I, I, that's one of the biggest areas I'm excited in as well. I'm, I'm speechless. I couldn't agree more with you, Elfish. I mean, we went from DeFi summer to the real DeFi here. Uh, this is exciting. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. I'm lost for words. So I'm going to move right on to Nicole. Nicole, same question. One, two, three industries you're excited about and why at the early stage? Yeah, um, I'm interested in the future of work um, because I think there's a lot of work to do to get people back into jobs and skill assessment and, and all of that. Um, and I'm really loving marketing technology right now, you know, as a career marketer and, and CMO and CRO, we're in a phase in the world where everything is knowable. And that was never the case before. And so to Alpish's point and, you know, data driven marketing technology um, and AI driven technologies are really exciting to me. We can know and understand what topics people really care about across what mediums. And it's, it's all knowable. Um, I also, in the marketing tech category, love conversational AI and chatbots. They're getting so smart. Um, we're able to help people, not displace people, but really help people along with navigation and you know tasks, even 
through to manufacturing or HR. Um, so I, I love that. Um, and I also, you know, I've, I've been absolutely in love with blockchain technology. I built a venture capital fund based on the blockchain. And, you know, I did that in 2018 and it, you know, felt a little early and now everything's just starting to come into fruition. And I see these applications, you know, really being quite, you know, useful and, you know, we're not mainstream yet, but um, I see the proliferation and just as I was thankfully on the earlier days of, you know, the commercial internet and mobile, um, the blockchain technology and, and that whole infrastructure and the projects and, and the value systems that typically go with those projects um, are really exciting to me. Keith. Well, after after everybody has said all these great ideas, uh, I'll, I'll try to say something uh, something different here. Uh, you know, I'm excited about opportunities in supply chain. I think there's there's so many problems uh, with uh, global, national, and even local supply chains, and great opportunities for innovation to address them and improve them. Uh, so that's a space I'm very excited about. Um, related to that, uh, investment in, in ag and food tech. Uh, one of my companies is Hazel Technologies, and they recently, uh, I, I love the Series B in that uh, company. Um, they recently closed the Series C with Tamasek coming in, raising $70 million, and we, the Series B was only $10 million. Um, this company extends the shelf life of produce and uh, actually other um, products as well um, uh, by uh, uh, preventing their decay or greatly slowing their decay is maybe a more accurate way of saying that. And yet uh, their product is uh, grass or generally recognized as safe, which means it's edible and it can go into these foods and you don't need to uh, wash it off. There's no waxy coating or anything like that. Uh, and, and the solution is so simple. Uh, it's just, uh, and anybody packing the produce just drops in a little sachet, like a little packet of sugar or silica gel pack. One of those dropped in every box. That's it. No CapEx requirement for the people who adopt this technology and uh, shelf life is, is extended enormously. Um, wonderful, wonderful technology. Very excited about that intersection between uh, food tech, ag tech and supply chain. Uh, and maybe one other, um, uh, I think medical diagnostics, um, great opportunities here without all the regulatory problems that you have in therapeutics, et cetera. Uh, one of my companies is Redland Technologies that came up with a uh, much better way to do the imaging from uh, CT and nuclear scans uh, with a quarter the radiation. You can get a far better uh, result. Um, you know, there's guidance that each patient should limit the number of CT scans they have in their life. And that's because of uh, prolonged uh, repeat exposure to radiation, of course, uh, is very damaging to your cells, to your DNA, causes cancer or can cause cancer. Um, and so this technology is fantastic. Commercial, they're in uh, the majority of the next generation CT scans scanners from uh, the, the big suppliers right now. I'm very, very excited about that space and uh, nothing's going to slow down the aging of our population. Uh, there's an enormous uh, opportunity to make money and save lives here. So I'm very excited about that. Lastly, Jason. Yeah, I'll rehash a little bit of what others said uh, from my perspective. Um, I, I'm excited about future work and even specifically virtual events. Uh, you know, the pandemic has really accelerated all of this technology and the usage and adoption of it. So people will, I believe, still use all these things. There'll be a hybrid approach, but people will have more options and you can scale what you're doing and connect with people around the world, whether it's through the virtual event software or even remote tech or, or uh, workforce software. You're, you can manage teams uh, remotely and, and really from different locations. So I believe this, all this stuff is gonna be accelerated and it's really, or it has been accelerated. So it's really a great time to be building companies in those spaces. Also one that wasn't mentioned is EdTech. EdTech is 
I believe finally having its due, there are exits happening now in the space. And again, the acceleration of, a, of technology usage by schools uh, is is grown and, and you need to have that solution available for the, you know, when you need to have that remote school environment. Also in the corporate side of things, the, you know, ed tech in the corporate side also, I, I believe is quite big too. And again, some of that is around remote tech, just, uh, educating the workforce and keeping them up to date on, you know, whatever it is that they need to for the, to do their jobs better. But I, I believe that's accelerated. Like Coursera has gone that route now, and there's a lot of money in that. And then the other one is health tech, especially around telehealth or telemedicine. Uh, that also has been accelerated as well, and you know, for people to do a lot more remotely than. Going into the hospital or doctor's office, it saves a lot of costs uh, for the the medical assist, uh, industry as well. So um, I I'm bullish on that as well. So um, there's others, but I'll stop there. Now, this is great. It means there's so much opportunity. There's more that we could all talk about. So with that being said, I want to come around for closing thoughts, quick closing thoughts. One piece of advice you have for entrepreneurs starting a company now, getting ready to build into the next 10 years of this cycle uh, in terms of, of fundraising. So advice for an entrepreneur and then also close. Where can everyone find you is online? Jason, I'm starting back with you. Advice, where can everyone find you? Uh, as we talked about before, there's a lot of money out there. Uh, build the right relationships, get connected to the investors, and you know, take, pay attention to what they're investing in as well to make sure that you're talking to the right investors. But the money is there. There's a lot more ways to get access to capital than there was before. So don't uh, don't worry about the money not being there. If you're building something that has value and you can build it to scale, the money will follow. Uh, so you can reach me at uh, on LinkedIn as well as my email is jason at propellant.vc. Uh, thank you again for having me. Thank you, Jason Elpish. Hello. Yeah, um, I, I think one of the comments uh, one of the panelists made was quite interesting, um, which I, I, I agree with is find the product that you're focusing on and building and get that done and partner for everything else partner for everything else which i think is is a great great point to make um you know a lot of companies that i deal with on a regular basis say we're going to build everything we're going to own everything we're going to build everything and it's like well what's the problem you tried to solve and why don't you focus on that oh but we need to build all this other stuff so for me my my that that com that that's that comment was made earlier which i think is a really relevant point um where can you find me i'm on linkedin my name, you know, is Alpesh Toshi. You can find me there. Um, if you connect or want to connect, let me know where you saw me and, and what, what your reason for connecting is. On Twitter, it's Al, at Alpesh Toshi. I, was, I started using Twitter back in early 2008. So I've got my, my name as my, my, um, my uh, Twitter handle. So, and uh, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Keith. Right, yeah, you can uh, follow me on LinkedIn. Um, as well uh, on Clubhouse at Keith Gillard. Uh, I host a, a few different shows, uh, uh, most uh, most prominently maybe tomorrow. Uh, we Every Wednesday we do the Canadian Venture Capital and Private Equity uh, event at noon Eastern time, 9 Pacific. Um, also host a show on Corporate Venture on Tuesdays and uh, a Climate Book Club on Saturdays. Uh, Garrett. Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn under my name, Garrett Van Wagener. As far as advice to a new startup is make sure your business plan, you define what you're trying to accomplish. So when people call you that are may maybe, you know, whether it's friends and family um, or you're out on social media, so you can tell them what exactly are you trying to do? What problem are you trying to solve so that you can pinpoint exactly who your competition is and, you know, um, what your what your growth rate is going to be, but you have to be able to define that. That's very important. Wonderful. Thank you, Gary. Last but not least, Nicole, close us out. Yeah. Uh, for entrepreneurs, my advice is find a way to fall in love with your business every day. It's going to be really hard along the way. There are going to be bumps but if you can find a way to fall in love with your business every day, it's gonna take you through 
I mean, Kyle said, you know, if you're building a business for the next 10 years, you got to do it. You got to, you know, really find ways to, to fall in love with your business and your market and really understand that market. Um, and I, I always also like to just remind entrepreneurs that, you know, this point has been made during the show, but it's so critical to really partner with those who are investing in your business. Look at the value add that they bring. You are in relationship with those investors through the duration of that business. And so that investor should be bringing everything that they have to the table um, at this early stage so that you can be successful. That's business development relationships. I mean, it's across the board, you know, legal, HR, I mean, really talent acquisition, what have you investors should be bringing it right alongside you. So those are my two pieces of advice. You can stay in touch with me uh, via LinkedIn. Um, I'm on it very regularly. And also I'm on um, Twitter as Techie Cat. Wonderful. Thank you all so very much for your thoughts and insights today and to our audience for tuning in and all the great comments and questions that came through as well. We appreciate all of you tuning in. If you like what you heard, make sure you click subscribe, share, and like today's episode. Also check out the archive on latoken.com to hear from today's speakers and all speakers of the VCTV galaxy as well. Uh, and with that, make sure you do reach out to each and every one of the co-hosts today because we all want to hear from you as investors, learn more about what you're each building and also connect with those investors that are tuning in as well. But as Elpesh mentioned, when you do reach out, where you heard us, where you met us, and what you would like to continue the conversation about so we can all make it productive as well. With that being said, a big thank you to LaToken team and to Maria for making today's episode possible. I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with each and every one of you and enjoy the day. With that, we'll see you back here tomorrow with more VCTV. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Happy Bye, May everybody. the 4th. Bye.